Hi, I'm Christian Mouchet, and I'm going to present our research on multi-party homomorphic encryption. This is joint work with my EPFL colleagues Juan, Jean-Philippe, and Jean-Pierre. We studied a particular solution to the secure multi-party computation problem in which n parties want to compute a function of their joint input, yet without revealing more than the final output to the other parties. We consider a setting where a passive adversary can observe all the communication between the parties and can corrupt n-1 participants. This is a well-studied problem for which many solutions have been proposed and implemented. Most of these implemented solutions are based on linear secret sharing schemes in the offline-online model, in which the parties generate multiplication triple during an offline phase to be used in the beaver multiplication protocol during the online phase. Although it is common for these approaches to use homomorphic encryption techniques, this use is often confined to the offline phase only. But there exists another family of MPC approaches that use a multi-party homomorphic encryption scheme, or MHE, as a standalone solution. An MHE scheme consists in four procedures, a key generation protocol, an encryption algorithm, an evaluation algorithm that needs to support at least two arithmetic operations, and a decryption protocol. These procedures constitute the three phases of the MHE-based MPC protocol. In the key generation phase, the parties participate to the key generation protocol in order to obtain their secret keys as well as a collective public key, with the property that decryption under this collective public key requires the knowledge of each of the secret keys. In the evaluation phase, the parties encrypt their private inputs using the collective public key and use the homomorphic evaluation capabilities of the scheme to carry out the evaluation of the desired function. After this phase, the function's output is available, yet it is encrypted under this collective public key. Hence, in the decryption phase, the parties obtain their final results by means of the decryption protocol. One of the main characteristics of the MHE-based MPC protocol is its low communication complexity and this is thanks to the non-interactive evaluation procedure. However, there were still several challenges in applying these MHE-based techniques as practical privacy-enhancing technologies at the time they were initially proposed. First, they represented a total inversion of the CPU cost versus network cost trade-off. Second, there was no implementation of such solution that was publicly available. But the situation has changed until then with a new generation of homomorphic schemes, such as the BFV and CKKS schemes, that are now much more efficient. In addition, there are now several actively maintained libraries implementing these schemes, as well as an ongoing effort to standardize them. Together, these factors motivate further research around MHE schemes and their applications. This brings us to the contribution of our paper. We propose a multi-party extension to the BFV scheme that is based on the ring learning with errors assumption. We follow the same core approach as the previous work on learning with error assumptions and propose several improvements and extensions to it. We also implemented our constructions both for the multi-party BFV and CKKS schemes. Finally, we evaluated the resulting MPC solution both from a system design and performance perspectives. Constructing a multi-party encryption scheme from a single-party scheme can be done in two steps. First, you decide on a structure for the collective secret key. So each party owns a key, and the collective secret key is a function of all the parties' keys that we will denote big S. For example, the collective secret key can be a sum of all the parties' secret key. The chosen structure defines the data access structure which is a set of all possible sets of parties that are able to collectively decrypt a ciphertext under S. Since the actual collective secret key must remain unknown to the parties, the function S must never be computed in practice. Hence, the second step consists in expressing the operations of the base scheme that depends on the secret key as secure multi-party protocols. In our case, the base scheme is BFV which is based on ring learning with error encryption. We use a ring R, which is a polynomial quotient ring with integer coefficients modulo Q. We define two distribution over R, 
u the uniform distribution, and r the error distribution, for which the sampled polynomials have coefficients that are small with respect to the modulus q. The security is based on the following assumption. Let s and e be secrets, sampled in the error distribution, and p1 be a public polynomial sampled in the uniform distribution. Then, given the tuple of the form p0, p1, where p0 is equal to minus s times 1 plus the error, it is hard to find s. Moreover, p0 is indistinguishable from the uniform distribution, and p0 plus sp1 is close to 0. This directly provides an asymmetric encryption scheme. From a secret key s, Alice can compute one of these tuples and pass it to Bob as her public key. Bob can encrypt the message m by sampling a new secret u, multiplying it with Alice's public key, and adding some fresh noise terms to obtain a pseudorandom mask. This mask is added to the message to obtain a ciphertext. Then, Alice can decrypt by cancelling this mask, thanks to the highlighted relation between the secret and the public key. This provides Alice with a noisy approximation of n, which she can decode to m, provided that the noise is not too large. This brings us to the construction of the multiparty scheme from the presented base scheme. As mentioned, the first step is to choose a structure for the collective secret key big S. To do that, we observe that pk defines a linear function in S. This property can be preserved, provided that big S is a linear combination of the party secret key. We propose to use the simplest linear combination, where S is the direct sum of the, all the secret keys. Note that all summations in this presentation are from i equals 0 to the number of party n, so we simply omit the bound in the notation. By transposing the ring learning mystery assumption to this secret key structure, we observe that the indistinguishability property holds as long as less than n secrets are known to the attacker, which is consistent with our defined security model. Now that we have defined the secret key structure, the next step is to express the public key generation and decryption procedures as secure multiparty protocols. Let's start with the public key generation. We first observe that the expression of a usual public key for secret key S can be decomposed into locally computable terms by distributivity. This provides a single round protocol to generate the collective public key for secret key S. After commonly agreeing on the public uniform term P1, which can for example be sampled from a kit PRF, each party locally computes its own term in the sum. A second observation is that by adding a fresh error to these local terms, they become valid ring learning with error terms, which can be safely disclosed to the other parties. By summing these terms together, we, obs we obtain a public key that has the same form as the usual single party one, only with larger noise. This is not a concern, however, because the noise is only linear in n, which is still small with respect to the modulus q. The fact that both the public and secret keys have the same form as in the original scheme is very useful. This means that our ciphertext and other cryptographic objects do not grow in size with the number of parties, and that we can use the encryption and evaluation procedures of the base schemes directly in our multiparty scheme. To construct a decryption protocol, we observe that the decryption circuit is a linear function in S. Hence, it can be computed term by term for each secret key in a similar way as in the public key generation protocol. This provides a single round protocol for decrypting multi-party ciphertext. These decryption terms, after being added some fresh noise, can also be safely disclosed to the other parties under the ring learning with our assumption and summed together to obtain the inverse masking term. As for the single party decryption procedure, this yields a noisy term that is close to M and can be decoded provided that the noise is not too large. In our paper, we tackled several other challenges that we now briefly mention. We provide an efficient two rounds protocol to generate BFV and CKKS relinearization keys that are necessary to operate homomorphic multiplication. We also provide a generalization of the decryption protocol which enables the parties to re-encrypt a ciphertext encrypted under the collective secret key into a ciphertext encrypted under an arbitrary key. Hence, external receivers 
who don't have any private inputs into the computation don't have to be part of the MHC setup phase. Finally, we also discuss several aspects related to the ciphertext noise. How to quantify it, how to reduce it without a CPU-intensive bootstrapping, and how to hide it from the computation receiver, which is crucial for the security of the scheme. Please refer to the paper for a more detailed discussion about these aspects. Let's now take a step back and discuss the features of an MPC solution based on MHE. The first feature is the low number of rounds of communication. Only two rounds are required by the setup phase to generate the collective encryption and relinearization keys. Then, one round of communication is required by the parties to provide their inputs, and one round is required to decrypt the final output. The second relevant feature is that, unlike the LSSS-based MPC solutions, the offline setup phase only needs to be performed once for a given group of parties and for a given set of cryptographic parameters. After this is done, the parties can perform an unlimited number of iterations of the online phase, hence an unlimited number of circuit evaluations. This is an important property because, as we'll show in a bit, the setup phase can be the most costly one when the circuit is small. The third feature is that once the parties have provided their inputs, the evaluation phase can be completely non-interactive until the result decryption. Moreover, this phase operates on ciphertext data only and can therefore be performed by any semi-honest party. This enables the parties to outsource the computation of a large circuit to a cloud service in case their own computing environment is not powerful enough, and they can go offline until the result is ready for decryption. Finally, the fourth relevant feature is that, in addition to the public evaluation phase, the whole protocol has in fact a public transcript. As a consequence, the execution of the MHE-based MPC protocol does not require any direct nor private party-to-party -party communication and can be performed asynchronously over any public authenticated channel. Again, this enables the party to leverage on a powerful cloud server to assist them during the key generation and decryption protocols by storing and aggregating their shares in the protocol execution. Indeed, this can be a very relevant design when the parties have low or inconsistent connectivity. Hence, from a system design point of view, MHE-based MPC techniques can lead to a family of both peer-to-peer -peer and cloud-based MPC solutions that can support a broad range of computing scenarios. To support the prototyping and evaluation of such solutions, we have implemented our constructions in Latigo, a Go library for ring learning with error-based homomorphic encryption. Latigo implements the BFV and CKKS schemes and has a pure Go, fully optimized ring arithmetic layer. Hence, its performances are on par and sometimes better than C++ homomorphic encryption libraries. We proceeded to evaluate the performances of the MHE-based MPC solution using our implementation. In the cloud-based setting, we considered two MPC tasks, each representing a generic circuit, an n-party vector product circuit, and an n-party oblivious input selection circuit. These circuits are simple, but are often at the core of more complex computation tasks. In both cases, we used an LSSS-based solution as the baseline, the MP-speeds implementation of the overdrive protocol for passive adversaries. In the peer-to-peer -peer setting, we considered the task of generating multiplication triples for the Beaver multiplication protocol. We used the oblivious transfer-based generator of the MP-speeds library and the Latigo implementation of the single-party HE-based generator as baselines. For this presentation, we'll focus on the input selection and multiplication triple generation circuits. The input selection circuit can be seen as a generalization of oblivious transfer to the n-party case. We have n-1 parties that provide an homomorphically encrypted bit string and one receiver party that provides an encrypted query identifying the party she wants to receive the input from. We provide the corresponding homomorphic circuit in the paper. The plot on the left-hand side shows the end-to-end -end latency for the MHE and LSS-based solutions for different number of parties. This is the time it takes to provide the receiver with the clear text output. The graph on the right-hand side shows the pair-party traffic. We observe that, in this experiment, 
the MHE-based solution start to overperform the LSSS one for both metrics at n equals 8 parties. However, this does not take into account that the LSSS offline phase produces triple that can only be used once, whereas the MHE setup produces public keys that can be used for an unlimited number of circuit evaluation. Hence, when the cost of performing the MHE setup can be amortized, only the cost of its online phase, shown in light blue, should be compared with the cumulative cost of the two LSSS phase. In such setting, the MHE-based approach overperforms the LSSS1 for all number of parties. To further demonstrate the potential of the MHE-based solution for large-scale MPC, we evaluated this circuit over 8,000 parties and allowed the server to use 24 cores at the evaluation steps. The response time was only 61.7 seconds and is mostly driven by the homomorphic circuit evaluation, the parties' cost being independent of n. In the peer-to-peer -peer triple generation experiment, the parties must compute a product C between two additively secret shared values A and B, and each receive an additive share of the result. The figure on the left-hand side shows the throughput in thousands of triple generated per second for each triple generator. Except for the two-party case, the MHE-based generator overperforms the baseline generators. The figure on the right hand side shows the network efficiency in thousands of triples generated by megabyte of network traffic per party. For this metric, the MHE based solution is always the most efficient one. The presented experiments represent simple functionalities that can be easily and fairly compared to our baseline systems. My colleagues have worked on applying the MHE based MPC protocols to more complex machine learning training tasks. In the Spindle system, also presented at PETS this year, they train a logistic regression over 6 million samples distributed across 160 parties in under 3 minutes. In the Poseidon system, presented at NDSS this year, they train a 3-layer neural network on the MNIST dataset with 60,000 samples distributed across 10 parties in under 2 hours. Both these systems use the CKKS instantiation and LATIGO implementation of our work. To conclude, we presented a multi-party homomorphic encryption scheme and its instantiation as a standalone secure multi-party computation protocol. This instantiation has a number of interesting features, such as its network efficiency, its low number of rounds, and the fact that its transcript is public. We discussed how this is enabling a promising cloud-assisted model for MHE-based MPC and showed that this protocol can outperform the LSSS-based ones especially for a larger number of parties and when the MHE key generation can be amortized. As an example, we notably demonstrated a practical MPC circuit with 8,000 parties. Finally, we implemented our constructions in the Latigo library and the code is available on the GitHub repository. Thank you for your attention.